Hi, beautiful friends of Bookish Fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. I'm so glad you are here hanging out with me for a bit. Today we are here to do the reading taste tag and I have a little surprise for you. So this is a tag that's been going around and I personally saw it on What Victoria Read as well as Chloe Reads Books channels, but I believe it was created by Harriet Rosie. I will be sure to leave the original tag video as well as Victoria's and Chloe's channel down below for you to check them out if you would like to. I really like the idea behind this tag because it gives me a little bit more of an opportunity to formally discuss my reading tastes. Obviously you see what I like to read if you have been watching my channel. Like you get an idea of what I like and what I do not like in books, but I don't think I've actually formally sat down and discussed my reading tastes with you. I'm just going to kind of use the questions that are part of this tag as a little bit of guideline to discuss some of my reading tastes. So question number one is describe your reading taste in one sentence. If I have to boil it down to one sentence, I would say it's probably something along the lines of I read a little bit of everything spread all over the place. And I'll go a little bit further into detail here with question number two, which is describe your reading taste with categories, i.e. genres, age, lengths, etc. So like I said, I read just about everything. I don't think that there really is a genre that I have completely banned from ever reading. There are certainly genres that I do not gravitate towards. I definitely don't gravitate towards like literary fiction, nonfiction, memoirs, biographies, things of that nature. So I may read them occasionally, but they're not going to be anything that you see frequently featured on my channel. I would say that the genre that I read the most of are thriller, suspense, and mystery novels. I'm going to group them all together for the purpose of this video, just because I do think that there is a lot of overlap between those genres. So thriller, suspense, mysteries, those are by far the genres that I read the most from. And in fact, I actually have some of my statistics here from the spreadsheet that I keep going throughout the year. And according to this so far, 35 of the books that I've read could be classified as suspense thrillers and about nine of them would be more classified as mystery. So about 44 of the books that I've read this year could be in those genres. And that is roughly 40% of what I've read so far this year. But I also frequently read adult fantasy. I also read a lot of historical fiction and I definitely read a lot of contemporary. Now, a lot of these contemporaries could potentially be also classified as contemporary romances, but I classify them as contemporary because romance is not necessarily the main or the only thing that are happening in these books. I also do sometimes read literary fiction. And like I said, I do occasionally read nonfiction. If I am reading nonfiction, it is typically true crime. I very rarely read a memoir or autobiography, biography, things of that nature. I also do tend to read some sci-fi, although I read far less sci-fi than I do fantasy. I also read some horror, magical realism, paranormal, all of those genres. I tend to read at least one or two books of. So I definitely read extremely widely. Now, in terms of age, it's primarily adult. I've mentioned this multiple times recently on my channel, but I have moved moved almost completely away from YA and I've never really read middle grade. So all of the books that I read these days are almost always going to be an adult age range. And in terms of length, I feel like my comfort zone in terms of page length is roughly between 350 and 400 pages. I am really skeptical of short books. So books that are like under 300 pages, I really don't trust them to do justice to the story that they're telling. Now, of course, it also does depend on the genre. So I'm far more likely to read a very, very long fantasy novel that's 800 pages than I am to read an 800 page contemporary or thriller. But for the most part, like 350 to 400 is my comfort zone for most of the books that I read. But I do read a lot of longer stories. I have read a bunch of books over 600 pages this year. So I'm not really necessarily afraid of big books. Like I know a lot of people are. I am willing to put in the time and the energy with the big books just because I know that I'm going to get an amazing story out of that. Question number three is show us a few books that represent your reading tastes. So let me go gather them really quick. Okay, so I may have grabbed more than a few, but I'm just going to go ahead and quickly run through them. So first we have The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is one of my favorite romance books of all time. It is set in the wilds of Alaska and it is a hate to love grumpy sunshine romance that absolutely stole my heart. I love these characters. I love this series. Cannot recommend enough. Reminders of him by Colleen Hoover. Colleen Hoover is one of my favorite authors of all time and this is definitely one of her strongest in my opinion. There are a lot of harrowing and raw topics covered in here and I just thought it was beautifully beautifully done. So I really just picked this up to be representative of Colleen Hoover, but if you want to start somewhere with her, this is one that I would recommend. The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. Karen Slaughter is certainly one of my favorite suspense thriller authors because she is dark, gritty, gruesome. She is not afraid to put her characters through some stuff. A lot of her books feature some very disturbing dark topics and I am here for it. She does dark and messed up people doing dark and messed up things better than anybody else in my opinion. This is one of her standalone novels and it is absolutely one of my favorites. Cannot recommend her enough. The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna is another one of my favorite authors of all time. I guess I really don't need to keep saying that because all of the books featured in this stack are by some of my favorite authors of all time but she 
primarily write historical fiction and this is one of my favorites. This is another one that is set in Alaska, although the vibe is definitely very different. It is about a small family and the abuse that they suffer at the hands of the father in this family as they're kind of out there living in the Alaskan wild. Desperation, desolation, you can absolutely just feel it. It is absolutely so, so, so harrowing in this story. Kristen Hannah just knows how to tell a story. She knows how to bring her characters to life and this is one of my favorites by her. Speaking of authors who know just how to create real and memorable characters, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which is one of my favorite stories of all time. I absolutely cannot stop shouting the praise of this book from the rooftops. Y'all just need to read it. Just do it. Trust me. I also have the Nevernight series by Jay Kristoff. This is an adult fantasy series that features an assassin named Mia Corvier and the stuff that she has to go through in order to get revenge for the death of her family. And I just absolutely love this series with my whole heart and soul. It is certainly one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. Jay Kristoff is absolutely a master. I love his sense of humor so much. And I've also loved his young adult Illuminate Files sci-fi series as well as his current Empire of the Vampire series. He is certainly one to check out if you have not already. Of course, I could not do this section of the video without talking about Sarah J Mass, more specifically House of Earth and Blood, aka the Crescent City series by Sarah J Mass. This is her first adult fantasy series and I absolutely loved it. You can see that I tapped the hell out of this very first book. I absolutely adore this world. I adore the complexity, the characters, but I've also really enjoyed the Throne of Glass series and the Akatar series, which are both young adults. Sarah J Mass can do no wrong in my opinion. She is one of my favorite fantasy authors and I just love this one so much. Of course, I'm also going to feature No Exit by Taylor Adams, which is one of my favorite suspense thrillers of all time, primarily in the subgenre of like wintry isolation thrillers. Absolutely loved this one. And then a recent favorite, but not a recent favorite author, The Only One Left by Riley Steger. I basically picked this up to be representative of his entire work, even though his work is basically hit or miss for me. His works are just a good time. Like I always have a really decent reading experience and this is certainly one of his strongest, one of my favorites, and I absolutely love this. So if you were looking for a new thriller author, go ahead and give him a try. Question number four is a book that you didn't enjoy, but it seemed like it would be your reading taste. Now this is actually really difficult for me to answer, not because I can't think of anything, but because I can think of too many things. Because typically if I'm picking up a book, I firmly believe it's going to be my reading tastes. So I have a ton of books that I have read that I thought were going to be my reading tastes, but just didn't really work out for me. But one that really comes to mind and one that really sticks with me because it was one of my worst books of 2022, Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. Now I would say that this was tentatively my reading taste. And the reason I say that is because this was only the second Alice Feeney book that I ever read. I read Rock, Paper, Scissors. And for the most part, I liked that. I primarily liked the twist of that. And so I wanted to go ahead and pick this one up because this is another isolation thriller. It is not wintry isolation, but they are basically out in the middle of the ocean on an island and they can't get to and from the mainland during high tide because it kind of washes out the bridge. So the people in this family are out there on the island. They're celebrating their grandmother's like 80th or 90th birthday and Nana winds up dead. And there's definitely an and then there were none kind of trope going on here because soon other members of the family start being picked off. On the outset, I thought that I would really enjoy this. You have the isolation factor, you have the and then there were none factor, but I thought the execution of this was absolutely atrocious. I did a full rant about this book in my worst books of 2022 video. I will try to remember to link it down below in case you are interested, but I absolutely hated this book and I predicted one of the major twists. I think I would probably want to say chapter two or three of this book. Like I absolutely knew where it was going. So this is one that I went in thinking it was going to work for me and it just didn't. And then on the opposite end of that, question number five is a book that you enjoyed that you didn't think would be your taste. And the first one that popped to my mind for this was actually The Sweet Spot by Amy Popel. This was the very first book that I picked as part of an aardvark book box. It was my very first time subscribing to them and none of the selections were of interest to me. And I really only selected this one because it seemed like the one with the biggest chance of being one that I would enjoy, even though the chance was still very, very small. I was very hesitant going into this book, but I actually enjoyed this one immensely. This is kind of a comedy of errors overall. There are a bunch of really quirky and interesting characters in here and I just had such a good time. Overall, it was very sweet. It was heartwarming. It was touching. It was about three women coming together that seemingly don't really have much in common, but they all kind of work together towards a common goal. And I just really enjoyed this one overall. This is certainly not one that I hear talked about in the online bookish community, but if it seems like it could be something for you, I would highly recommend giving this a try, especially if you're looking for something that's on the lighter side, but also has a lot of heart. This is definitely one I would recommend. Question number six is show us some books on your TBR that seem like they are going to be exactly to your taste. So I just grabbed a handful of books that are on my physical TBR that I have within reach. First, I have False Witness by Karen Slaughter. As I just discussed, Karen Slaughter is one of my favorite suspense thriller authors of all time. This is one of her newer standalones and I am hyped for it. This is actually one that I'm reading in October and I cannot wait to get to it. I also have Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister earlier this year. I never read anything by her before. I don't know if that was a debut or not. And I really enjoyed that one way more than I was thinking. And I enjoy the premise of this one. It's about a detective who is supposed to be looking for a missing girl, but she's being blackmailed. And in order to keep her secrets from being revealed, she cannot find the missing girl. And I really want to see what Jillian McAllister does with this. I think that I'm going to really, really enjoy this one. I also have Blacktop Wasteland 
Plant by S.A. Cosby. Now, believing that this is going to be entirely my taste is simply based on the fact that I read Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby last year. It was one of the best books that I read last year. It was so violent and gritty and gruesome. It was so incredibly satisfying and I loved it. I was not expecting to love that one nearly as much as I did. And so I'm kind of expecting the same thing with this one. I will actually be reading another S.A. Cosby in October. It's going to be All the Sinners Bleed, which I don't currently have on my physical TBR. Otherwise, I would be holding up that instead. But I assume that I'm going to love that one as much as Razorblade Tears. And if I do, then I certainly believe that I'm going to love this one as much as both of those. So I wanted to go ahead and share this one as well. And the final book that I want to share is The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. Kate Quinn is quickly becoming an autobi historical fiction author for me. I have absolutely loved the other two books that I've read by her and I am hyped to get to this one. I hope to get to this one by the end of the year if I can, but this is beautiful. It's thick. It's got deckled edges and I just trust her completely. She writes amazing World War II historical fiction and I'm excited to dive into this one. Question number seven is a booktuber you watch that has similar taste to you. And this is probably going to come as no surprise to anybody because I talk about her frequently on my channel, but I'm going to have to say Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand is probably the booktuber I watch that has the closest reading taste to me. And the reason I say that is because she also reads extremely widely. You never really know what she's going to be reading at any given time. So she reads incredibly widely like I do. We don't necessarily always have the same opinion on the books that we are reading. For example, she loved Daisy Darker. She gave it a five stars. It was one of the best books that she read in 2022 and it was one of my worst. So we don't necessarily always have the same opinion on the books that we're reading, but our genre tastes are very, very similar. And a lot of the books on her TBR are a lot of the books on my TBR as well. I will say that the main area that we differ probably is with age range. She reads middle grade. I don't read middle grade at all. And I only read YA very, very occasionally and very selectively. And she still reads YA quite a bit, I think. So I would say that's the main difference. But overall, if I had to pick one of the booktubers that I subscribe to, she would probably be the one that's closest overall. Question number eight, have you always had this taste in books or has it changed over time? And it has 100% changed over time. My reading tastes today are almost unrecognizable to my tastes from 2017 when I started to get back into reading for pleasure. I was a voracious reader when I was a child and into my teens. I would devour books and then, you know, I started to grow up, get interested in boys. I went off to college. I was working full time. I was doing a lot and I really just lost interest in reading for pleasure. And I lost that for a really long time. I would say probably almost 10 years I lost that. And then after I graduated with my undergrad, not only did I rediscover reading for pleasure, but I also discovered the online bookish community and booktube. And that really opened my eyes to a lot of the books that were out there that I would not have otherwise known about. And so I just started to kind of devour absolutely everything. And I was still really honing my reading tastes at the time. And not only that, but I was still heavily into YA at that time. And I was not into fantasy at all. So my tastes have drastically changed because not only have I completely moved away from YA, but now I'm reading adult high epic fantasy. And I mean, Brandon Sanderson, Stormlight Archives level of complexity, Game of Thrones level of complexity fantasy. So I'm fully in my fantasy era. I will say that the one thing that probably hasn't changed is my love of suspense thrillers. I was reading those when I was a young kid and now I'm reading them well into adulthood. So that hasn't changed, but I definitely feel like I read more widely these days. I definitely feel like I can read a lot more complex books. So my reading tastes have certainly changed and evolved and I love it. I love what I'm reading now. I have a far better idea of what I do and do not like in books. And more and more often I'm picking up books that I do love and I now understand who I am as a reader a lot better. And then question number nine is to tag some people. So of course I'm going to tag Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. I will also tag Audrey from Chapter and Converse, Krista from Books and Jams. I will also go ahead and tag Sid from Sid Bookworm as well as a new little channel that I discovered, uh, Brittany Rand. She's brand brand new to booktube. She just started out and I'll go ahead and tag her as well so she could do this if she would like to. All right y'all that is it for the reading taste tag. I really hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit more about my reading taste. Although I'm sure a lot of this really didn't come as a surprise to you if you've been following my channel for any length of time, but I still hope it was interesting. And now I do have a little small surprise for y'all if you were interested. So if you remember, I can't remember whether it was late August or early September, I did an unboxing of the Unplugged August Adult Book Box. This was a new book box that I was trying. It's not a new service. It's just one that I had never tried before and I wanted to see what it was all about. And I did my unboxing of that. And unfortunately, I was very, very disappointed. And I really just did not have any urge to continue. But unfortunately, I did not cancel in time. And so I actually just recently received September's box and I have it here. It is brand new, never touched, never been opened. And I just don't want to open it. I don't want to unbox it because I just want to give somebody an opportunity who might enjoy this more to have it. So I'm going to go ahead and hold a little bit of a giveaway for the September Adult Unplugged book box. So if you are interested in entering this giveaway, the rules are pretty simple. First, of course, you have to be a subscriber to my channel. Second, unfortunately, I'm going to have to limit this to US subscribers only just because the cost of shipping internationally can be very, very prohibitive. And third, go ahead and comment down below and answer the tag question that 
I just recently answered about a book that you thought was going to be to your reading taste and you just really didn't enjoy or a book that you didn't think was going to be to your reading taste and that you did enjoy. So go ahead and leave a comment down below if you're interested in being sent this box and I will go ahead and do a random comment picker to select the winner. If you do want to leave a comment on this video but you don't want to enter the giveaway please feel free to include that in your comment that you are not interested. I know a lot of people who watch my videos just like to leave little emojis to show me that they were here and they don't necessarily want to be entered into the giveaway. So if you would like to do that as well you can you can go ahead and leave me a little book emoji but again if you are interested in receiving this box please comment down below and answer the tag questions that I referenced and be subscribed to my channel and I'll do a random comment picker in a few days to select the winner. And that's it for me today guys as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week sometimes two depending on what I can do and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms. I always leave links to my Goodreads, IG threads, and Instagram down below if you would love to chat with me on any of those other platforms. You know how much I love to connect with you. But until next time guys, bye.